The reason that West Point struck me as a fantastic place to have this discussion is at West Point, they have challenges that make ours pale. They have challenges that give perspective to anyone listening. I think leadership is what makes the world go round. In November 2009, West Point reached out to me to come speak to the 43 cadets who were selected by the 4400 cadets as the next great generation of leaders. The final question I was asked as an aside was the best question I've ever been asked, which is, how many people were at NetApp when you joined? 32. Well, we're going to have 32 people in the unit when we go to Afghanistan within 120 days. They said, and whether they live or die will depend upon the decisions we make. What's your advice for us? I remember thinking, how far away are we from storage at this point? <laughs> I mean, this is like, wow, then he puts in reality. My answer as an aside was, I wouldn't think of them as 32 people in a group. I'd think of them as 32 individuals. Ask yourself three questions. What are their hopes, dreams, and aspirations? And you should know that. If you're gonna lead them into that kind of situation, they gotta know that you know everything about them, you care about them. I think if you can answer those three questions, you're in good shape. Second thing I said is you should never send them on a mission you wouldn't do. They gotta know that and believe that for them to go. And lastly, I said, if you're gonna come home alive or they're gonna come home alive, they're coming home. And they gotta believe that. And the cadets were quiet for maybe five seconds, seemed like a lot longer, and they stood up, saluted together, and walked out. We all sat there going, whoa. I was left there thinking, this is a special group of people that I would like to be associated with the rest of my life. If I can just give you something to think about, I've done my job. We had an evening in New York with Colonel Eric Kale. The evening became a special evening because Eric wove in the challenges he had in Fallujah and other places and how that related to business. And all our people going, whoa, gave an incredible perspective to no matter how hard our challenges are, they pale in comparison to what some of these people are doing. And then that led to, let's have this event at West Point. You meet with the people at West Point who are humble about what they've accomplished, incredibly humble, because you have to draw it out what they've accomplished or what they've given for this country. So when you sit back, it's almost overwhelming to think that these people would even honor you by saying our missions are similar. I think they are on a level of leadership, but what they're trying to accomplish is very, very different, very, at the end of the day, they're willing to give their life for what they believe in. And, and I think it's an incredible honor to sit in their presence and have these discussions together. The most common theme people gave back to me was, I'm not gonna bitch again. I can't even think of along those lines. I have to make sure that I'm lifting my aspirations and that there's an honor involved here. I, I like leadership rather than management. I don't like the word management because I think you manage things, you lead people. There's nobody that you would follow willingly, which is leadership as opposed to being ordered to, that you don't think cares about you. So I think showing people you care. So I, I challenge executives all the time when I say, if you believe what I just said and you say people are our most important asset, tell me how you show them you care. Exclude compensation. That's usually where they fall apart. So leadership is showing people you care every day. There's, a, there's five aspects of leadership that I grade myself on as I think about things. The first is aspiration. Are we shooting high enough? As a company, NetApp has shot very high from the beginning and it's part of our culture we're gonna to aspire to great things. But aspiration, I think most people aspire too low, most companies aspire too low, thereby stopping themselves as opposed to some other force. The second is inspiration. What are you doing to inspire them to get there? Now the thought that's occurred to me a lot recently is I've thought about what we can do to keep the culture of NetApp. We have to inspire people when they need it, which means not when they've won. Most celebratory calls are thank you very much, but if you call someone when they're in the middle of the fight, when they have the problem, when they have a challenge, you see, regardless how this comes out, without you, we wouldn't have a shot. That's inspiration. And I don't think that's just a top top guy thing. I think that's throughout a company. You gotta seek out and look for opportunities to lift others. The third is innovation. We'll never be able to overpower people by numbers. Every competitor our particular company has is faced with much, much larger competitors. So we have to innovate our way there. As you do, you say, is that the most innovative way of leading somebody or making something happen? And leadership is fundamental to that. The fourth is preparation. I get asked a lot when I do public speaking, you get nervous. The answer is no. And the reason is I'm prepared. If you're not prepared, you're nervous. So if you send someone on a task, you send them on a very difficult task, as again, we're aspiring, 
If they're prepared, they're confident. Confidence is the answer to not being nervous. So I really believe you have to say to yourself, am I preparing this person for the mission that I'm sending on? And the last one is passion. Without passion, there is no leadership. So you have to demonstrate passion. I'm not talking about be vocal. Passion comes from within. One thing I would say about all leaders who are successful in the world that they have in common, I don't care what culture, I don't care what industry, people come through from not because they're afraid, not because they're intimidated, they just don't want to let them down. And you have to earn that. I get asked a lot of times, did you ever think NetApp would be the successful from a business point of view? I said, no, and I never did. But I always thought it'd be something we'd be proud of the rest of our lives. The West Point people share that exact same emotion. They're doing something that they want to be proud of the rest of their lives. And it goes back to doing the right thing, living your life a certain way. So when you reflect back, you never wish you had done something completely different. And you didn't do anything you regret. You know, we're asking people to do incredible things at NetApp. And here we are from 2005 to 2010. There's six companies on earth our size or bigger that have grown to 20% compounded growth. We did it without acquisitions. It's almost impossible. We want to be a company that shoots incredibly high all the time. If you miss sometimes, that's how it goes. We don't want to be the company that shoots low and hits everything. The people who serve their country and willing to give their life for their country are shooting as high as you can possibly shoot.